Good afternoon and welcome back to the second edition of our Welsh Premiership video podcast series. Today myself, Aidan Evans, uh, Tobias Head and Adam Cleary are joined by newly appointed Kamal and Quinn's assistant coach and current Cardiff Blues player, Josh Turner. So Josh, how are you doing? Um, how's lockdown treating you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, well, it's been interesting. Uh, I think it's about 12, 14 weeks now I've been in lockdown. Um, it's going to be a great opportunity to spend some time with the, my family, my two girls and my wife. Uh, they've had me building tree houses for them and, and water slides and all sorts. So it's been fun for them. Uh, but for me, it's been uh, probably the best break I've had physically and mentally for, away from the game. Um, you know, we're in the end, by the time we're back playing, it's going to be something like five months without, without any contact. So, the, you know, already my body feels like I've probably had a new, another two years to my career already. <laughs> Um, and I think I spoke to quite a few of the boys and they've all said the same thing. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been a blessing in disguise, really. Um, and, uh, and, but I am eager to get back into it at some, some stage. Yeah, is it um, back to training next week with the Blues, is it? Yeah, we're due to be back in on Friday. Um, obviously, we've just announced that we've, we're changing our training venue. We're going to move to Pentwin Leisure Centre. Uh, we've got exclusive access to that for, you know, the next period um, while we, well, up until we play these games and then hopefully for the foreseeable future as well then. And uh, looking at the pitches, it's, it's an excellent facility for us and, you know, it works really, really well for us. And it's not too far off the M4, which is ideal as well. So, Josh, obviously, uh, with the Kamal and Queens now, will be your first steps into coaching. So, can you tell us about how this move come about? So, I've actually been coaching for about um, eight or nine years. Um, I've been, uh, I started when I was at the Scarlets, um, I started uh, with their regional 18, under-18s team, I must have been about 22, 23 when I started coaching, um, and uh, I think Rob Appleyard at the time was the academy skills coach and he asked me, look, do you want to get involved? And I've always been quite e- keen and quite eager to get, get involved in coaching, so that's where it started and um, coached, coached them for about four years, we had a couple of successful teams winning the RAG 18s competition a couple of times. Um, and then when I moved to Cardiff, I kind of did the same role there, um, coaching role, but with the Blues under 18s, and I did another three or four years of that. Um, and just just uh, trying different things in terms of like whether it was uh, def- coaching defence or coaching line out, uh, being a forwards coach, or um, you know the last year I was with the Blues 18s, I was a head coach, so you know I got a little bit of a, a feel for that, even though the the the, uh, it was only a short competition that year, um, you know, and I really enjoyed it. And then the last two years, I I'd gone back and just for a different experience. I went and coached uh, Newcastle Lemon in the championship um, and Division One, and you know, I really enjoyed that. It was a hell of a learning curve for me uh, as a coach because um, you don't know how many numbers are going to turn up to train in. Luckily, luckily down there, there's a good group of boys and. You're always getting between 15 and 25 boys, so you can always do something. I think there's only once when I turned up and there was like five or six boys and it was hammering it down, it was freezing cold and, you know, you could understand it was middle of winter and no one wanted to be there. Um, and it was actually a couple of years ago, Steph, uh, the team manager at Quinn's got in touch and asked me if I'd, uh, if I'd be interested in going to Quinn's and I, I just said yes to Newcastle Emirates. So I said, look, um, at the moment I'm going to go and give that a crack. I just want the experience. But if anything ever does crop up, uh, please keep me in mind and um, obviously with with Ems um, finishing up with Quincy yeah, Steph did get in touch and um, to be fair they um, it all happened pretty quickly to be honest and I said yes and there was a couple of sit down conversations and I'm looking forward now to get involved with Commander Quinn's and um, next season when we do start yeah, and you'll be working close with uh, Craig Evans there next year. Can you tell us what sort of role you have there in the coaching in the coaching team? So I'm going to be in, in charge of the line out and the conduct area, um, assisting uh, Geth with his uh, Geth and Robinson, who's the um, defence and scrum coach. Um, and then anything else I can help them with, really. Um, you know, obviously the we've got. A lot of my own ideas, but also a lot of stuff that we do in the senior in the pro game can translate to that semi pro game. And you know, it's not too far away um, in terms of the it's just probably a 
cut down version if if you say and then if you're going back to under 18 just a cut down version again of what you do at this at the professional level so if anything i can assist them with i'll just be i'll just be trying to give them as much help as i can really and um, uh, obviously it's a stepping stone and a learning curve for me and i'm really looking forward to it um, the big thing is um, there's some expectations because of how well they went this year um you know they're they're that they really get Cardiff a good game at home turned them over with 14 men you know they sat that that top five of that table for most of most of the the year and then ended up finishing up in second when the season did get um pulled but you know there's some some big games there i think they're they haven't been drovers for a while and that'll be a, a key target a team that i've played for um and obviously you know any derbies a key then it's also picking off teams uh, in the other regions and the t at the top of the ta top of the table. Yeah, and uh, you'll still be playing for the Blues next year. So how will you balance playing for them and coaching with the Quins? So it, it worked. Um, it worked quite well. I was this year and last year when I was coaching against Lemon. I was I was coaching on a Tuesday and a Thursday night. And obviously, I live in I live in not far from Cross Hands, and uh, it's a bit about forty five minute journey um, to Newcastle Lemon. So you know, I, most most Tuesdays and Thursdays I was there. Sometimes Saturdays we had a clash in terms of uh, if I had a game or I was away. Um, and I've told the Quins, look, it's a similar situation, really. Look, I'll be there as much as I can in terms of the, the the Tuesdays and the Thursdays. If there's a game on the Saturday and it clashes, then I won't be able to make it. Or if we're travelling on the Thursday and we play Friday, then I might be able to make it on the Saturday. Then so you know, there's usually I'm going to be there twice a week regardless. And yeah. lucky thing is with Quins, they they train either in Abergwilly or in in Carthen or in um, in uh, Cross Am. So it's only two minutes around the corner for me, and a little bit less time in the car. And hopefully, it'll work out well um, with 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 them. And you've coached a lot of age grade teams, like you said, and you're obviously going with the Quins now next year. But do you have bigger aims for coaching in the future? Uh, you know, it's definitely something I want to get into. Um, you know, I, at the moment, I'm just seeing these as all stepping stones and um, a progression, really. And where I want to end up is coaching regional rugby eventually. And, you know, whether it's a uh, set piece, uh, forwards or defence, you know, I'm still open at the moment in terms of what direction I want to go in, in terms of my coaching. But uh, it's definitely something that I, I want to pursue after I finish playing. Um, I've still got three years left on my Blues contract uh, and my focus is to play as best I can every week um, and be the best rugby player on that on that field. But, you know, also I've got to start thinking ahead of what I want to do after rugby and coaching something that really interests me and I want to get involved with it. Yeah. yeah so moving on to your playing career then, um, how do you feel last season went with the Blues? Um, yeah, for me, <laughs> I, I felt I had a pretty good season as a, as a, as a squad. As a as a blues team, you know, it was uh, we'd beat someone um, and then we'd lose one and then we'd win one and then it was just a little bit of a uh, um, bit of inconsistency in our in our season and that's probably something that uh, you know we'll look at this this preseason leading into next season um, because at times it's, it's probably cost us uh, and um, you know missing out on that top four now with the way the Hopefully the well the new Champions Cup next season with 24 teams we're probably just going to miss out on that and you know that's that's the toughest thing because you're only you're not too far away from getting involved in that top European competition is and that's what we want um, but look we've got a really strong squad um, we made some key signings and strengthened other positions and um, you know we we're really looking forward already as a squad to get back involved for next season. Yeah, you've got 10 Wales caps. Uh, do you still have hopes of adding to that now that Wales have a new coaching sector? Oh, look, I'm never going to write off playing for Wales. It's, it's a massive honour whenever you pull on that red jersey. And um, I, I remember um, I was sitting at home. I think I'd just finished watching Scarlett's play Leinster. And I had a phone call saying, do you want to come to Argentina? And, you know, I've had that phone call probably three times now in my career where I've been sitting in the house someone's picked up a bump in the last couple of games and, and you know the squad's already been picked and um i get a late phone call do you want to come in and you know you're never going to say no and it's always i'm always going to have that ambition to pull on that welsh jersey because it's such a massive honor representing your family your friends 
um, everyone has supported you for since you've been playing rugby. So, yeah, I've definitely got ambitions to play for Wales again. Whether it'll happen, I don't know because, you know, there's so much competition now when um, you look at some of these youngsters coming through and they're really, they're really pushing, pushing the level of uh, performances up and up and up. Yeah, obviously you've still got a few, year, a few years left of playing, but what would your career highlight be so far? Oh, um, I think um, the the game against Pau, semi-final against Pau in um, the Arms Park. Um, I actually enjoyed that game more than I enjoyed the final against Gloucester when we won the, the Challenge Cup. I just, Pau was such such a force at the time. Uh, you know, they were, they were flying in the top 14. They had some massive players in their squad as well. Um, you know, people like Conrad Smith were playing, Stefan Armitage was playing from, Dylan Armitage was there. You know, there was, they had a ma they had a real good, strong squad and to turn them over at the Arms Park in front of a full house, uh, I'll never forget it and the celebrations afterwards. And like I mentioned earlier, you've got 10 caps for Wales. Uh, how proud is it for you knowing you've got 10 caps for Wales in arguably the period where the back row strength and depth is probably the strongest that's ever been in Wales? Oh, um, yeah, I know the competition for places has always been tough. Um, and I remember, I remember my first, um, my first call up, it was actually in 2009, and I went on a summer tour to, um, to North America and uh, I didn't get capped. Uh, I was, there were six players who went, who weren't capped and five come back capped and I was the only one not to. So that was a little bit of a kick in the, kick in the, in the guts, but, um, you know, it just, it just makes you want to work harder and then, um, in 2011, when I was actually called up for a Six Nations campaign, and um, I felt like I'd actually earned it because it wasn't a Lions year, and, and um, the the so-called first choices weren't away, and I'd earned it basically by my performances for the Scarlets at the time. So um, you know, and that's that was probably quite a proud moment as well, is is having that initial call up in that in that 2011 Six Nations. You know, there were some there were some big omissions in that squad as well because you only picked 28 28 man squad. So, you know, to be picked in front of people like um, uh, Martin Martin Williams and Robert Sam Taylor at the time, who were, had been in, involved in those campaigns for quite some time, or involved in Wales for quite some time, you know, um, you know, I was, it was quite that was quite a proud moment. But again, going back to the competition for places, you know, um, I played with Sam Orbton and Justin Tipbrick all the way through the age grades. Dan Lidia was another one I played with and, and Toby was coming through a couple of years uh, underneath us. So, you know, there was a real crop of young back rowers at the time coming through and, you know, everyone just pushed everyone on to, to new levels really. And, you know, it's sometimes it's harder to get out of the squad than it is to get into the squad. So obviously you mentioned uh, Kamal then finished second in the uh, short season of last. Uh, under Emya Phillips uh, and a big improvement on the seventh place the previous season. Do you feel that Carmarthen are pushing in the right direction? Um, yeah, they've got a really strong set of squad. Um, they've got young players who are coming down from the Scarlets and, and assisting them at times as well. And those boys who are coming from the Scarlets are actually Carmarthen boys as well. So, you know, you've got Jack Price or Jamie Sebastian, Josh Helps, all of these boys have, another one, Osh, I'm not. These boys have come through that Carmarthen kind of district area. Uh, they're from they're either from Carmarthen or have played youth rugby or senior rugby for Carmarthen before. So you know the the pathway does work, and um, hopefully we can help develop those youngsters to push on for higher 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 well playing for the Scarlets basically or or Wales later on. Um, but I think at the moment uh, you look at the squad strength that they've got. You know they've got quite a few ex pros in there who at the time were very good people like Nick Reynolds. Um, you know, I think Torrent probably could have been a pro, but maybe it's a little bit too late now. Um, and another young fullback in um, Leon, Leon Randall. All these players are exceptional players and um, they've, got a, they've got a nice spine to their team. I just think that, you know, they could probably push on next year and really compete at that top of the, uh, top of the premiership. Yeah, so with that squad, would it, be a realistic expectation for Carmarthen to win the league? Oh, I'm not going to write that off. Um, I think if you ask the boys, they're definitely, they're definitely going to target it. Um, and, you know, I think 
I've spoken to uh, Craig Evans and Geth. You know, um, it's about it's about progression this year and about um, you know obviously they've 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 the last couple of years they've been mid table and then last year they were really pushing the top of the table. So you know, there's absolutely no reason why we can't can't do the same again this year. And uh, any uh, news on potential incomings or outgoings yet? Um, oof. Uh, I don't know if I can go into that. Any that you can <laughs> share? <laughs> uh, I think there's no, there's no, there's not really any outgoings. I don't think. Um, I think there's, like I said, there's quite a settled squad there, and I don't think any of the boys wanted to wanted to go anyway. But um, you know, it's. I think the way the season ended, uh, it's going to be a lot the same for a lot of clubs. I think, um, especially the lower leagues as well, below the Premiership, is that a lot of those teams will feel like they've got unfinished business, and I think a lot of players will stay. Stay quite, um, stay where they are. I think I don't think you'll see much movement. But again, um, on that, I think you know you've really got to find the best ways to get the best out of the players who are there as well. Um, you know, you look at you look at the way things are going financially for clubs. It's it's not sustainable to to pay massive wages. So you know, if you've got a crop of young boys coming through your system. Um, you're going to do all you can to keep hold of them and nurture them to be the best players they can be for your team then. Okay, so you played in the Premiership when you were a youngster at Scala. Um, how did playing in the Premiership help you to develop? Yeah, we're going back a few years now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I remember my first... Um, 2006, I played Division 1 for Martin Quinns. And the end of that year then, I'd had an appendicitis first on me so I'd have, to have that out. I played Wales 19s in the end of that season and I was, I was busting to play some more rugby and Schnatty gave me a couple of games. So it was the end of that 2006-2007 season I played for them. Um, and I remember going up to something like Bedglass and it was absolutely belting it down. Uh, the pitch was like a bog and uh, I was on the bench and um, that was my first experience of Premiership Rugby. and. Um, you know, it, the first couple of years were quite hard because I think it takes a little bit of time for your body to actually physically develop to play men's rugby. You know, I, I was always quite a big lad playing age grade, so I'd got away with it. But then when you step up to that premiership standard, uh, whether it's playing for Clashy or Sandovery or, you know, Quinns again, um, I have played for all three in the premiership. You come up against, even when you're a youngster, you come up against guys who have been playing premiership for 10 years sometimes, and they've just got that little bit more experience, that little bit of nous. They're body hardened um, physically. They know how to play the game at that level, and you're still learning your your, your trade. Um, so sometimes it's like I've seen guys coming off second best and youngsters being maybe dropped in a little bit too early because they're not physically ready. And that's the that's the thing at the moment is everyone keeps saying, "Do you want to play? You want your youngsters to be playing so you get exposure to senior rugby." But on the flip side of that, you've got to be physically developed and ready uh, physically and I mean like go and put some size on uh, get yourself to a, um, a level where you can uh, compete physically with the guys who have been involved in that league for years uh, to make to be make justice of it um, and justify it really because I've seen guys go in there and they come off second best and they get injured quite early and they're maybe not physically ready for it and so that's what a lot of the academy coaches and uh, managers have to weigh up is is a guy, is a certain player ready physically? Like a winger might be ready a lot earlier than a back rower because, you know, he's not going to have as many contacts, but he's going to, he's, he might lose his speed earlier. So by the time he gets to 28, 29, 30, his, his speed levels are dropping off where physically for a front rower or a back rower, they, they're starting to, to benefit because they've got all that experience, their body hardened and, and it's, it's that weighing it up on both sides, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then that leads on to my next question then. How big is the jump from regional rugby, uh, from premiership rugby to regional rugby? Oh, again, um, you know, you're always going to get a couple of freaks in there. Someone like George North who's going to go straight from playing Wales 18s, Wales 19s or whatever, straight to playing regional rugby because physically he was ready. But then on the other side, you might get someone like another player, uh, we might take him a couple of years before, and I'm just saying this because you know obviously it'd be different positions. A prop will probably mature later than a than a, a winger would or a centre. So um, 
But again, going from Premiership to the regional game, there is a massive difference physically because, again, you're coming up against guys who are bigger, stronger, more powerful, quicker, um, and the game's a lot harder and a lot faster. So, you know, I, I remember, I'm not going to name the player, but he was a prop and uh, he was playing regional rugby regularly and uh, he had his body comps done and he was, he was way over 25%. And uh, the, the, the nutritionist said to him, if you got picked by Wales, you wouldn't last two training sessions. Your body would break down physically because you, you're not you're not in a in a good enough position. So again, going from regional rugby to international rugby is another step again, and and that's what you got to be mindful of as a young as a youngster coming through. Is you know you want to be playing the highest level possible, but you've also got to be physically ready to do that. Yeah, so with what you've said in mind, do you think some younger players are better off playing in like the regional A League or the Celtic Cup instead of the Premiership instead? Oh, I think you'd probably be um, better matched in terms of um, the quality of players on the field because, you know, you could go somewhere. Now, I'm not going to name teams, but there's a few teams in the Premiership you'd rather not be playing on their boggy surface. And, you know, you'd like to play on a, on a pristine pitch like... Either, either a 4G like the Arms Park or somewhere like Liberty or Park Scarlet because they've got good pitches. Um, and I think, I think either an A-League or a Celtic League will help develop these youngsters in the long run, um, whether it's at the end of the season or the beginning of the season. You know, I think they've got to find a way of fitting in there somewhere because you're only going to help develop that, that batch of player that's in between probably Premiership and the regional game. And that's a massive thing at the moment is where do you get these... Young, where do you give these youngsters rugby? Because sometimes they don't necessarily fit in with Premiership squads either because they they want to keep their own players happy as well. And uh, finish off then, Josh, we've got a bit of a teammates quiz for you. I know you've uh, got a few answers prepared there, but are you ready to do it yet? <laughs> um, oh, worst dress has to be Macaulay Cook. Hands down. Horrific, <laughs> the type dress, you've seen him wear. Oh, he... You wear a blazer with a t-shirt on a night out, you would. <laughs> with, with a pair of uh, New Balance trainers. <laughs> Who's the best drinker in the squad? Um, oh, i got to say, the best drinker in the squad is, you'd go all night, is Ben Murphy. Um, fair play, he can put some swig away. Um, I would have, have backed myself a few years ago, but I think I've... I've Come of age now, and I, I, I'm not, <laughs> not as full on as I used to be. Um, do you have a changing room DJ there at all? When I was first when I first joined the Blues, it was uh, Gethin Jenkins. He was no one else could put me was gone, but <laughs> but him, and it was always hard dance trance. Unsa, 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 so, um, and I don't think he's changed too much either. But at the moment, um, Nick Williams, um, he's got a real uh, all round um, selection of music and. He does a lot of the gym, gym change room DJ, so you know, I let him run for that one. Saying that, a young youngster coming through now with Azarati, he's uh, he's got a decent selection of music as well. So big, give him one. The competition for Nick Williams up there. Uh, is there the biggest liability on a night out in the squad at all? Um, oh, I don't know. There's, there's too many to say, I reckon. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a couple, a couple of youngsters coming through who, who once they've once they've had too many, they just need to be put in a taxi and sent home. So <laughs> uh, I'm not going to name names on that one. I don't think it'd be fair. And if you was on a desert island, who is the teammate you most like to be with, and the one you would least like to be with? Uh, I'd probably take. I'd, I'd probably wouldn't mind me stuck on the island with Navs, Josh Navidi. Get on real well with him. He's my roomie. Uh, who I wouldn't want to be with. Um, uh, Rhys Curry probably because he's um, he's a he's a he's a mess. He's he's why well, he's unhygienic. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Most props are, aren't they? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be left in a in a in a lift with him. In a lonely <laughs> like that. Remember to like and subscribe to the video uh, and check out our first video podcast with Clint Every Stalwart, Richard Brooks. Follow us on Twitter at Welsh Prem Pod for further updates on the next installment. Take care and goodbye. He's got a brand new car. Looks like a jet.